The Nasdaq 100 is a popular investment choice for investors who are looking for exposure to the largest non-financial companies listed on the Nasdaq stock exchange. The index has outperformed the broader market in recent years, and it is expected to continue to do so in the future. So some key features of the Nasdaq 100 is its modified capitalization weight index, which means that the weight of each stock in the index is determined by its market cap. Okay, guys, so in this video, I want to talk about the top performing assets as of 2023 and as you all know we've just passed the midpoint of the year and the stats that i'm going to show you are a couple of days ago and you might be watching this in from a different time there might be some changes in the movement but this is as of the end of june start of july 2023 so this is to show also that there are some assets that may have been down the past year they might have been battered and this year they're the ones that are up they're the ones that are doing well it goes to show that it pays to buy the dip it goes to show that it, you need to have conviction it goes to show that you know what you're getting into so that when people are scared you know what you're doing you know what you're getting into that you don't get scared and you're the one who's buying when everyone's scared and those who do that are the ones who reap the benefits when things are better when the market reverses or when things start to go up as well now before i also talk about the top performing assets in 2023 i want to talk about the worst performing assets so far number four are financials the financial sector is down about three percent number three are utility companies they're down about five percent number two are energy stocks which is down about 9%. Then you have number one is crude oil, which is down about 12%. So relatively, the ones that are even down from a broad market, it's not as battered as what we've seen in the previous years. Now let's talk about the top six best performing assets in 2023. Number six is the Russell 1000 growth which is up by 27% by the time I got the data. And for those who are asking what is the Russell 1000, it's basically a stock market index that tracks the performance of the 1000 largest US companies by market capitalization. It is a subset of a larger Russell 3000 index, which tracks the performance of the 3000 largest companies in the US. The Russell 1000 is maintained by the FTSE, a subsidiary of the London Stock Exchange Group. Now, what's interesting about that is the Russell 1000 is a popular investment choice for investors who are looking for exposure to large cap US stocks. The index has outperformed the broader market in recent years, and it is expected to continue to do so in the future. Just so you know, also some key features of the Russell 1000 index is its market cap weight, similar to how the PSE is, which means the weight of each stock in the index is determined by its market capitalization, which also means the larger your market cap, the larger your influence that you have in the index. And the index is rebalanced quarterly to ensure that it remains representative of the largest U.S. companies by market capitalization. The Russell 1000 index is a price-only index, which means that it does not take into account dividends or other factors that could affect the total return of the stock. Now, the Russell 1000 is a good benchmark for investors who are looking for exposure to the largest U.S. companies. The index has a long history of performance and it's a popular choice for investors who are looking for a diversified investment so think about it guys thousand stocks so that's really diversification if people think that investing in the psei is diversified 30 stocks or the dow jones 30 stocks also how much more for the russell 1000 now here are the top 10 stocks in the russell growth 1000 as of july 7 2023 j and j number nine is broadcom number eight is nvidia Number seven is Meta. Number six is Tesla. Number five is Amazon. Number four is Alphabet. Number three is Google L. Alphabet shares class A. Then you have number two is MSFT, Microsoft. And number one is Apple with about three trillion US dollars. Number five are consumer discretionary stocks, which are up about 31%. As you all know, also we're seeing times change as we continue to reopen. There's more mobility. People have more spending power as well. Number four is communication services, which is up about 36%. So number six, the Russell 1000 growth up 27%. Consumer discretionary up 31%. Communication services up 36%. Now number three is the NASDAQ 100, 
which is up about 38%. Now, for those who don't know what the NASDAQ 100 is, 100 is a stock market index that tracks the performance of 100, one of the largest non-financial companies listed in the NASDAQ stock exchange. It is a modified capitalization weight index, which means that the weight of each stock in the index is determined by its market cap, with certain rules capping the influence of the largest companies. The NASDAQ 100 is a popular investment choice for investors who are looking for exposure to the largest non-financial companies listed on the Nasdaq stock exchange. The index has outperformed the broader market in recent years and it is expected to continue to do so in the future. So some key features of the Nasdaq 100 is its modified capitalization weight index which means that the weight of each stock in the index is determined by its market cap similar to the Russell 1000 that I mentioned earlier with certain rules capping the influence of the larger components. Number two is the index is rebalanced quarterly, similar to the Russell 1000. And lastly, NASDAQ, similar also to the Russell 1000, is a price-only index which does not take into account dividends or other factors that could affect the total return. of The NASDAQ 1000 is a good benchmark for investors who are looking for exposure to the largest non-financial companies listed in the NASDAQ stock exchange. The index has a long history of performance and it's a popular choice for investors who are looking for a diversified investment. Comment below guys if you're learning and if this is something that's helping you. So here are the stocks that are part of the NASDAQ 100 in terms of market cap. You have PepsiCo at number 10, number 9 Broadcom, number 8 Nvidia, number 7 Meta Platforms Inc or Meta or slash Facebook, number 6 is Tesla, number 5 is Amazon, then number 4 and number 3 you have Google, Google Stocks A, Class A and Class C, number 2 is Microsoft and number one is Apple. So um, you have almost the same stocks for NASDAQ 100, at least for the top 10, and then also for the Russell 1000, which goes to show how large the market caps are of Apple, Microsoft, Google, Meta, and so much more. Let's go to number two, which is information technology stock, which is basically up over 40%. And if you've been following me also for quite some time, I've been a big fan of tech stock. What's interesting though about everything that I'm mentioning right here is that if you look at the Russell 1000 and even the NASDAQ 100, majority of them are tech stocks. And which goes to show the market might be lagging as a whole, but you have tech stocks carrying the weight of the entire market. And even if you look at the tech stocks that are relatively up, Apple is up 49.3%. On semiconductors up 51.6%. Monolithic Power is up 52.8%. Lamb Research is up 53%. Fortinet is up 54.6%. Broadcom is up 55.1%. Salesforce is up 59.3%. AMD is up 75.9%. Palo Alto Networks is up 83.1%. And NVIDIA, one of the best performing and highly connected to AI, is up 189.5%. So those are the individual stocks that are highly connected to tech that are up from the start of the year. So again, I guess the moral for this is find the time to be able to learn, find the time to be able to find something that is battered enough but you know a lot about it because you know a lot about it that there's a big chance that when markets start to move again or when the cycle continues to reverse again, it would be those stocks that, or at least those asset classes that would have their time in the sun and start to go up and number one one of the best asset class in my opinion is bitcoin which is up over 80 percent and i'll say this over and over a lot of people have said that bitcoin is dead bitcoin just continues to melt faces bitcoin continues to show people that it's one of the greatest asset classes ever bitcoin is up 80 percent for the year and we are less than a year for the next halving cycle that's it top six stocks russell 1000 growth consumer discretionary communication services, NASDAQ 100, information technology, and Bitcoin. So I hope you guys got a lot from this and I hope that this was something that was insightful for all of you. Marvin Germo, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.